Hey guys, just a quick vlog answering some questions that were put to me after this video. How to build websites in 218, which was a beginner's video. So, um, hey Steph, since you know about AI and need some advice, I'm taking a course at Udemy. I'm learning computer vision. From my experience learning from these courses online, they only teach you the techniques, sparing the details behind the functions they use. Yeah, that's the major problem with most of these courses. They don't actually teach you the nuts and bolts, the foundations, which is the key to all this. Do you think it's worth time to go into depth or should I just use the knowledge to absorb from these? So, so my general advice, once you have functional knowledge, meaning you can build something, it's time to learn as you go. So if this course gives you enough to be able to actually start building some AI, then I would just jump into it, whatever, whatever frameworks you happen to be using, and then learn as you go. I got this from my years experience as a developer and my years experience in business, my years experience in sparring and boxing. So for instance, once I had the basics down in boxing, my positioning, my stepping, my defensive position, the jab, the cross, etc. Then I would jump in the ring a lot. So it'd be, it would, went from like 90% theory to, uh, and 10% practical. It's, it's flipped, went from like 80% sparring and 20% technique and, uh, more knowledge. So don't make the mistake of getting caught up in endless tutorials. That is the general advice I give. That's why in my web stack course, in my Python course, I teach you those key fundamentals. And then with that background, then you can jump into any tutorial online. You don't need to take other courses necessarily. You can go to YouTube. There's lots of tutorials and walkthroughs. The key thing is to get your foundation and then start doing little mini projects. That's how you really learn. Uh, Jason here comments. Well said, I think the, it's important that people know that Wix and WordPress aren't threats to the business. They're just tools. 100% I agree. And learn the nuts and bolts, as you put it, it is the best option for flexibility and scalability. Exactly. You have to figure yourself as a web professional when you're doing web design or web development. And you just have to look at those web builders, works, Wix, WordPress, etc., as options that you could use, tools that you can use to uh, deliver whatever it is your client needs. And the same thing if you are a small business owner. If you're first starting out and you just need a brochure page and a Wix or a WordPress would be a very good solution. Even if you're writing HTML and CSS from scratch, I would say leverage templates to begin with, at least structural templates, meaning templates where they've worked out all the things that you need uh, to work out when you're putting together a basic layout. Now I teach that in my courses because you've got to know uh, the mechanics behind it all. But what you should do in production is go with a template. Boom, I want a three column. There's plenty of three column templates out there. You can grab, boom, and it just, it just gets you going real quickly. Much in the same way, a carpenter is not going to go out and uh, plant trees and then grow the trees and then cut the trees down and then create boards and wood slabs out of the trees, if you will. No, they're going to go to the, the hardware store or the wood shop and they're going to buy the wood prepared and then they're going to use that wood to build their furniture. Much in the same way if you're doing web design and you don't, you don't build from scratch anymore because all the layers have been worked out. It's all there for you. Now, if you're thinking that's cheating, it's not cheating because if you're using Windows to build a website, you're, you're using other people's code there. If you're using Mac OS to build a website, you're using other people's code there. You're constantly using other people's code. So as technologies evolve, as they become better, they provide these tools, these templates for you to build off of. So yeah, definitely. I expected the video to be about front end, back end frameworks, library stuff. Well, still very nice. And look, I like, yeah, I'm going to do a video that's going to get into more of this, these topics here, topics that people who are in web design already, already understand the stuff. I'll look at what, uh, what's out there in terms of frameworks and so on in libraries and what I think is uh, relevant for today. Answer this question. So if I understand it correctly, is it possible to integrate WordPress into some parts of my website and have some parts be entirely written in my own code? Yes, of course. You just install WordPress. The easiest way to do it and the cleanest way to do it is just to install WordPress in its own directory. So you might have killer sites slash dot com slash blog and the WordPress install is just just in the uh, it's just in the blog directory that's viable as well WordPress has the ability to create what they call they call pages 
and they're just static pages, meaning they're outside of the normal flow of a WordPress site. So you would create a page, quote unquote, with WordPress, and then you can say, make this my front page. In this case, WordPress would be the entire site, you know, totally. Another thing you could do, of course, is just create a new subdivision. You can create a WordPress site where WordPress is your root of your website, and then you could create a subdirectory and put your own static pages in there for whatever reason that you want to do it. So yeah, it, uh, you can do that for sure. I do that on some of my sites. Like if I go to killersites.com, this site is actually, this is a static web page. This is our own design from scratch. And I feed these WordPress articles here through our own custom code, very easy to do. But in the blog, this is WordPress, of course. Now it looks exactly the same because we just wrote the code that way. We did that for here. We did it that way. Now this is the site for my book, Web Design Start Here. And uh, I haven't updated this in a while, but nonetheless, this is all WordPress. So this front page here is actually WordPress and it's a static page, meaning it doesn't change unless we want it to change. So this is something that uh, you can do both. Both are viable. I hope that helps. And uh, depending on the response to this video, I may answer more questions in uh, from YouTube in a vlog style like this. Ciao.